When outputting films for four color process, once everything's done, you found your artwork and realized that this would be a good four color process print. You cleaned it up in RGB mode, take it into CMYK mode, added a highlight white if needed, added vector text. When everything's ready to go, you're ready to output your films. Now, four color process film output, printing the halftone lines and angles in the different degrees is a level of debate right now in the industry. Now, obviously this is a grading image. It's very optimal to use a RIP software. If you're not using a RIP software, if you're trying to bitmap it, it's going to be very difficult to achieve a good quality or looking print using bitmapped halftones. You definitely need to use a RIP and the best RIP to use is the AccuRIP because it has the highest control over the halftone size and shape and it overrides your software so it makes printing films very easy. On top of a RIP, you'd also want to use registration marks. Let's first talk about the RIP and how the halftones are printed before we talk about setting up your job with registration marks. Typically, the way the halftones have been printed with a four color process print is that they are offset 15 degrees for every plate. So right here, we see a great example of this. It's not the highest resolution of image, but we have four plates. We have black, magenta, yellow, and cyan. And each one is offset 15 degrees to create what's called a rosette. Now the theory behind this is that each one of these plates match up perfectly offset to one another, creating these little tiny beautiful patterns within the print itself. Now the caveat to this is it has to be registered perfectly, and your screen has to be stretched perfectly, and the weave of your shirt has to be stretched perfectly. What happens if one of these plates is offset? What happens when the rosette doesn't line up? So you have imperfections in your screen mesh, the weave of your t-shirt, your squeegee pressure, whatever it may be, when the rosette doesn't line up, this is what happens. Nothing lines up. Or part of your image is offset, creating a wave in your image called a moray. Well, instead of having to worry about this lining up perfectly, there is another option for you. For years, screen printers would chase their tail around in circles to try to get this rosette to line up perfectly with all those different variances involved with the four color process print. The creator of Accurip, Charlie Fassini, brought to me a method of printing four color process that's actually been around for quite a while called the Flamenco Method. You can read up about it on our blog or on our website silkscreeningsupplies.com under the Q&A section. The flamenco method basically takes this theory of having to cr print this crazy rosette and throws it out the window. So instead of printing in 15 degree variating angles, we're just going to print in one single angle. And that makes life so much easier because we're taking away all those different variables. Yes, the halftone dots are printing on top of each other, but they're mixing together wet on wet and they're creating a very solid, very crisp image. In fact, if you took a rosette printed perfectly registered rosette printed four color process image and lined it up to a flamenco method you could barely tell the difference by by the naked eye especially when you introduce all those other variables involved 99 percent of the time the flamenco method is going to look just as good if not better and it's going to be 10 times easier to set up and print so here's how you set it up simply go into your accurate choose your setup right now we're printing with the epson 1400 black max in all black mode and then how would you like this to be screened? You have a couple different options here. You have the shape of the dot, you have your angle of the dot, and you have your frequency. Now your frequency is, or LPI, is how many lines there are per inch. So that's how fine of dots you're going to be printing. Typically with four color process, that's going to be 55 line. Some printers go up to 65 or even 75 line. Some printers do it at 45 line, which makes it look a little bit more cartoonish. Now, the higher the line, the more detailed you're going to get. We would recommend printing 55 line halftones. When you're printing higher than that, 65, 75, 60 even, you start to lose halftones. And if you're not retaining all your halftones, you're not getting all the image detail or the image color value onto the screen and onto the t-shirt. Next, you select your angle. Now before having to select those multiple angles, we'd have to print each plate at a 15 degree variance angle. So one at 45, one at 65, one at 75, whatever they may, whatever they may be. Now we'll just make it simple. Print them all at one angle. 22.5 is the default and accurate. It actually works great. You can also use 61 degrees. The angle is not how the dot is printed, it's actually how the dot stacks up on top of each other. So if you notice right here, like 
envision this as our screen mesh. The screen mesh is stretched in 90, 180 degree, and thread counted by how many threads cross per inch. So we definitely don't want a 90 degree. We don't want a 180 degree. We don't want a 45 degree angle. So we want to offset that with a 61 or a 22.5 degree angle. That misses as many mesh crosshairs or mesh threads as possible and exposes the best onto the screen mesh. And next we have shape. For four color process prints, I always use either round or the ellipse dot. Recently I've used a lot more round dot four color process prints just because, especially with the flamenco method, it's a lot easier to register. Some experiment with ellipse dots if you're doing more high detail photographic work. To be safe, you can probably use round and turn out just great. So once that's set up, it's time to print our films. Before we print our films, we want to double check a few things. First of all, we want to make sure everything's ready to go. Second of all, we want to make sure our image is centered onto the canvas. So whether it be in Photoshop or CorelDRAW, we want to make sure it's centered. Next, we're going to go to Print. This is in Photoshop. And we're going to go to Setup. We're going to choose our Epson 1400 printer. We'll select the page size. And then we're going to select the center crop marks and we're going to choose our descriptions and labels. You can also choose registration marks if you would like. So this is going to give us an area to register all the way around the edge of the image. It's going to give our center crop marks to easily center it up on our pre-registration template and on our palette once we get on the press and it's going to tell us what color we're printing. So to print a four color process print, we'll simply highlight the color we're going to print out of Photoshop. We'll go to print. We'll make sure that our registration marks, center crop marks, description labels are selected, and then we'll print it out. The labels will tell us what color we're actually outputting, which is very important actually for four color process because some of the colors, especially like the magenta and the cyan, often look very similar. And then the registration marks will be key in registering our print. Registering four color process prints is very important because the colors have to match 100%. Without those fine printed registration marks through a RIP software, it's another great reason to use a RIP software because it prints registration marks so much easier. Without those registration marks, it would be very difficult to line up. In CorelDRAW, we'll go to Print. We want to choose once again our Epson or AccuRIP driver. We want to choose Color and Print Separations. Also use our correct color profile, which should be loaded into the artwork already. Then we'll ensure all our separations are printed. If we added a spot channel, we'd want to print that as well. Layout, standard layout, whether it be landscape or portrait. Print registration marks, I like using this registration mark right here because that gives me center marks. We want to print our file information. We also want to print our density bar scale, which will tell us when we expose the screen if we're washing out all our halftones or not. Once again, if we wash out all our halftones, the image will look much better. Typically, you're going to want to wash out at least to 15, 10% of your smallest halftones on either end of the scale. Then we'll go to print preview and we see all the information listed right here. So we have our plate magenta, we have our color scale, we have our gradient scale, and we are off to the races once we print our films. Once again, you can read more information on the flamenco method on our website, silkscreenesupplies.com, on the Q&A page, or four color process pages, or on the rionetblog.com. If you're old school and you're scared to try it, just try it one or two times. We've challenged hundreds of printers to do this, and by far, once again, 99% of them say it works just as good, if not better, every time, and it prints and registers so much faster and easier with very, very minimal chance of moray in your design.